He who controls the triage controls the project. Find out how to drive and control your project. The addition of just a single, truly awful meeting. I hope you've got decision making down because you're about to make thousands upon thousands of decisions. Unless you have no bugs on your project, you're going to want to do something like triage. And if you do have no bugs on your project, congratulations. But you might want to check the fine print on that contract you signed with that uh, shady man at the crossroads. Triage is an excellent analogy. I mentioned it in my uh, video on analogies. You are literally going through the bugs, deciding which you're going to tackle first, and unfortunately deciding which bugs are going to be left to die. You're grooming the bug list. In some cases, you might also be blending your bug list in with your task list. This is something I like to do in the later stages of the project, but not everyone does this. What is grooming? Grooming is making sure you have the bugs at the right priority, making sure the bugs are on the right person, making sure that the right person isn't overloaded, and also making sure that every bug is well formed and contains the right information. The process of doing this also teaches you an immense amount about the state of the project, the quality that it is in, but also the work that's happening, the places of the project that are strong and the places of the project that are weak. So let's quickly talk about priorities. Personally, I like a matrix of 16 priorities. First, you sort your bug list by four urgencies. So those would be urgent, as in drop everything and do it now. High, work on this as soon as you can. Medium, where you can allow the person to integrate it into their other work and prioritize it amongst that. And then low, which is something you do either after everything else is done or Look for opportunities to catch it in sweeps or other low-hanging fruit opportunities. Then you subsort the bugs by severity. Critical, this is literally, you cannot ship this project with this bug. It's a 100% reproducible crash. It's something that's not going to let you get through first-party certification, that sort of thing. A severe bug is a bug that you will not allow the project to ship. So something severely affecting quality, a plot that is unable to be completed, that sort of thing. Low is a bug that does affect the quality, but isn't preventing the project from shipping. And then finally, polish. These are bugs that may not be affecting the quality at all individually, but as you accumulate enough of them, then they start to do so. So all 16 of this matrix of bugs can exist. Some of them are pretty rare. You don't see urgent polish bugs very often, but they can occur. A small digression. You can see incredible benefits to, on some regular cadence, providing an opportunity for your devs to work on bugs outside of their assigned priorities. They can pick and choose things that they can do very quickly. So these are things like a quick bug fix week or some other opportunity for them to just clean up their list by getting things that are very easy to do. By doing this, you can actually improve the quality of the game quite substantially very quickly by giving them an opportunity to focus on things that they can knock off that list really fast. The planners on your team might not love this, but the benefit far outweighs the impact to your project. So once you've made sure that you have the priorities set, now you're going to make sure that the right person has the bug. If you have bugs that are being filed by your devs and not just by your QA people, and you should have bugs filed by your devs, they do have a tendency to end up in the wrong places. Devs find people that they trust and they tend to send bugs to those people. Also, bugs do have a tendency to end up on programmers if something's happening that the person who encountered it doesn't really understand what it is. Part of assigning things properly is making sure that you're load balancing your bugs. This means that sometimes you're going to be assigning bugs to people who aren't the best at fixing them, but are capable of fixing them. The good thing about doing this is this is a form of cross-training. This is allowing people an opportunity to learn other parts of the game and that gives you a certain robustness, which I see in modern development we often have hyper-specialization, which can lead to very brittle teams. A little bit of cross-pollination with bugs gives you a little bit more robustness. I sort of toss something out there. 
I said that you should have bugs filed by your devs, not just by your QA team members. And why do I say that? I say that because even though your devs are not going to structure the bugs or file them as carefully as your QA members, they, as the content creators, understand that content in a way that nobody else can. And they can see and spot bugs that otherwise would go unnoticed. Now, there's a flip side, a dark side to that. They also see things that literally nobody would ever notice and can file bugs that are not worth fixing because they are hyper-focused on their own craft and are spotting things that are completely unnoticeable by your players. But in aggregate, the bugs filed by your devs are a valuable addition to your bug list. Personally, I don't like bugs to ever be sitting on people who can't fix them or alternatively on imaginary people that you've created in the bug software to hold bugs. I feel that this is not a good way to deal with your bug list. However, this is not a universally held opinion. So how do you make sure as well that the bug is well formed? This is about making sure it has all of the information that is needed in order for the bug to be fixed. And ideally, no more than that. You don't want to overburden the filer with too much information. Some bugs require very little information to be fixed. If you have a, a place where there's a hole in the mesh and you can see out of the world, all you really need is the location of that hole. Nothing else is required. Requiring a bunch of additional information to be attached to a bug not only makes it harder and slower to file bugs, it can actually make the bug itself more confusing and harder to fix once it gets to the right person. Ideally, you want a way for the filer to attach a screenshot, or ideally even better, a movie, a way to attach an accurate location in the level. And if possible, something that is an actual link that you can click on that will take you into the editor at the exact place where the bug was encountered. Depending on the engine and tools you're using, this may or may not be possible. Now let's talk about the actual process of going through the bug list. Let's talk about the actual act of triage. For me, there are three different styles of triage. The first is an individual or at desk triage. So this is where you just sort of break up the bug list, potentially have lots of different people all grooming the bug list independently. In this case, you still want to have someone sort of sitting above those people and looking at the bug list as a whole. This is very fast, but there's a high probability of divergence in terms of prioritization and assignment. This is not a bad choice to just be a form of triage that you're doing all the time, just to improve the quality of your bug list. A group triage is where you literally gather people into a group. A small group, maximum of say five people, in a room together. And then you're examining the bugs together, but very quickly, up on a, uh, on a projector or something like that, you're looking at the bugs together. You have one person at the keyboard, and this should be someone who knows the tool and can be very fast and very efficient. Typically, I try not to run a group triage longer than about an hour. If you're being tight and careful, you can get about 100 bugs done in an hour. Now, this is inefficient. You have five people in a room for an hour to look at 100 bugs. But it does do something that individual triages do not and cannot do, which is allows you to align the prioritization, the priorities, what is important on the project. So I think they are critical to do along the way, and the further you get into the project, the closer you get to finish, the more important this kind of triage is, because it makes sure that you can get everyone on the same page. The final kind of triage, and arguably the worst kind of triage, but sometimes necessary, is a hybrid approach. So this is for the end of the project. You get those small group of people into a room, but you're in here 100% of the time. This is what you're doing now. You have a group triage running on the main screen in the room, and then individual triages are running throughout the room. You are looking at everything on the entire list. If someone runs into something in one of their individual triages that needs the group to look at, it goes up onto the big board. If someone comes in from the rest of the project to ask a question, you look at that as a group. You're all together, but you're doing work as efficiently as possible in individual triages. The point is to be extremely critical of every single bug. This is good for the very, very end of the project where the command and control needs to be unbelievably tight and you need to look at everything. 
this is awful. This is how I have landed most of the projects that I've been in charge of, but it is not a fun process. This can go on for weeks or longer, and you're all going to be really sick of each other by the time you're done. That said, there is an intense, powerful camaraderie that comes from finishing a project, landing a project with that same tight, small group of people. So if you have an opportunity to be one of the people in the room for a hybrid triage to land a project, it isn't fun, but it can be something that will stick with you for the rest of your career. So in summary, triages are very useful. Um, you should probably be doing them already, regardless of the phase of your project. You want to keep your bug list groomed and you want to keep it under control. Get the bug list in shape, keep it in shape. It's not fun. It's one of the uh, meetings I dread the most, but it is an excellent way to understand your project, align the people on your project, and ship your project. At various points in the project, the person who controls the triage is quite literally deciding the work that is getting done by each and every person on the project. What goes in, what doesn't go in. He who controls the triage controls the project. I've been surprised by how many projects don't use something like triage to control their bug lists. So if you enjoyed this, give it a like, but also share it with your other game dev friends. Maybe save a project.